help Indonesia city volunteers tend to fire survivors in Batam with emergency cash and relief items. We look back to the history of rabies and why the recent cases has Taiwan's government worried. Welcome to Dia Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. We kick off today's program in Indonesia, where two fires occurred in two different villages in Batam within two days, leaving some 70 households homeless. Upon learning of the news, city volunteers carried out a disaster survey and held a relief distribution which included emergency cash, baby formula and daily necessities for fire survivors. <laughs> The blackened walls are all that's left from the fire that destroyed two villages in Batam, Indonesia. In two days' time, two fires left 71 households without a place to call home. The fire happened at night and it spread quickly. In about five minutes, everything was destroyed. There was no time to rescue anything. Of course, I'm very sad. My house is gone, but I have come to accept it. In the wake of the fire, Batam's government's social welfare department made arrangements for survivors to stay in temporary shelters. But as everything was destroyed in the fire, city volunteers hurried to conduct a relief distribution. Soon these residents will be celebrating at Ofita, so we prepare some emergency cash, a few daily necessities like children's formula, clothes and stationery, so they can celebrate the holiday properly. City volunteers not only distributed emergency cash, but also a pail and other daily necessities. Not forgetting the children, volunteers also prepared backpacks and stationery for school. I'm grateful to have gotten help from Siji. I'm happy to have received assistance. I like these relief supplies. The other survivors are glad too. The items distributed by the city foundation helps these residents out a lot. Although the fire left nothing for the residents to salvage, however, city volunteers' love and care is enough to accompany survivors in the upcoming Eid al Fitr. A part of the summer program the City Batu Pahat Academy in Malaysia organized for its students is to visit the senior residents at a local nursing home and also the home of a city care recipient. Through the experience, the youngsters all realize their blessings and learn to share a little of their love to those in greater need. Students of the Tsiji Batu Pahat Academy mindfully feed kanji to senior residents of a local nursing home. The children can learn to care for senior residents, and if they have elderly people at home, they will realize that we all age. It will help them learn to be respectful and grateful. Though at an unfamiliar environment, students do not shy away from interacting with the elderly people by giving them massage and nail trimming services. Grandma, you can do a good deed each day. You put 50 cents in here every day and make a good vow and pray for good health. Next, the students arrive at the home of Tiji Care recipients Ling Fu Tai, who frequently participates in the organization's recycling work, bringing crayons to paint together. Seeing the less fortunate inspires these students to cherish what they have and pass on the love to those in greater need. Every year more than 55,000 people die from rabies around the globe and the virus has also caused 782 deaths in Taiwan some five decades ago. In our next report, we meet Hualien City Hospital Emergency Room Director Chen Li Guang, who is one of the few doctors that has had to deal with rabies here in Taiwan. Around the globe, one person dies from rabies every 10 minutes. 
Rabies is a disease that has existed for 4,000 years and has occurred in more than 150 countries. According to the World Health Organization, there are only few countries that are rabies-free. Research also shows that every year there are more than 55,000 people that die from rabies, with most of the deaths occurring in Asia or Africa. Rabies is a disease that is hard to get rid of once it occurs, and countries that have larger areas are more vulnerable to the disease. Currently, rabies-free areas are all island countries. In India, more than 30,000 people die from rabies every year. Economic development can stop the spread of rabies. Therefore, the virus is more likely to be under control in developed countries. In Taiwan, cases of rabies were seen during the Japanese colonial period. In 1948, 238 people lost their lives due to the virus. But the situation was finally contained in 1961. In those 13 years, a total of 782 people passed away from rabies. Back then, the disease broke out in dogs. Dogs rely on humans to survive, so household dogs were required to get a vaccine, and stray dogs were killed. In June of 2002, a woman from Hunan, China was found to be infected by rabies in Taiwan after she was bitten by a dog back in China two to three months prior to her visit. The woman was rushed to the Hualien City Hospital for treatment. The patient had hydrophobia. I still remember our nurses tried to provide her with water because we saw that her mouth was really dry. She wanted to drink, but by the time she took the glass of water to her mouth, she had already turned her head away. Unfortunately, after more than 10 days of treatment in the intensive care unit, the patient still passed away due to severe damage to her central nervous system, which led to organ failure. When a patient develops a fear of water and wind, it is an indication that the rabies has already damaged the brain. According to studies, at that time antibodies or other medicine will no longer work. Other than two imported rabies cases in 2012 and 2013, Taiwan has been free of rabies for the past 50 years. However, the island country lost its rabies-free status in July 2013. <laughs> rabies is a disease that can infect all mammals and one that has a 99.9% .9 fatality rate. The virus travels through the nervous system and can stay within a person's body without symptoms from 7 days to more than 7 years. Therefore, it is hard to predict if a person is infected or not. When the immune cells want to fight against the virus, the disease will travel through the nervous system to the patient's brain, and soon after, symptoms of rabies will start to appear. When the virus spreads to the whole body, it will mainly affect the salivary glands which causes those affected by the virus to attack and bite others so they can spread the disease further. However, rabies is also a disease that can be prevented. Every year, there are at least 50 million people that are treated after exposure to rabies. Starting in 2007, with the coordination by the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, September 28th of every year is recognized as World Rabies Day as a way to raise awareness and stop the further spread of rabies around the globe. In Taizong, Taiwan lives a husband and wife pair, both of whom suffer from life-threatening diseases. Facing the pain and inconvenience of their respective illnesses, instead of supporting each other through this difficult time, they grew further apart. Fortunately, Tzu came into their lives, bringing the couple together once again through love, wisdom and the power of recycling. The 
added a metal brace during the surgery and now walking is painful. Here the joint completely gave out and they had to put in an artificial joint. Not only is walking laborious, but with a bad heart, Huang never knows if the next breath will be her last. Sometimes I get so out of breath that I can barely breathe. The doctors had a surgery to clear out my arteries. One day I came home and saw that she was having a heart attack, so I quickly got her to Renai Hospital. Although she survived that heart attack, Huang continues to be plagued by illness. I have to take a lot of medicine for my heart, my headaches, the gas that I have in my stomach and so on. Besides Mrs. Huang's pile of medicine is her husband's. This is for diabetes. This is for my blocked arteries. Huang's husband once suffered from blocked arteries, which worsened his oral cancer. I underwent chemo and laser therapy for half a year. Fifteen years ago, before sickness found them, the husband and wife were a happy couple that traveled around Taiwan in their free time. However, as their respective illnesses took their toll, the couple slowly drifted apart. When we first started visiting them, they lived entirely different lives, even up to the point of cooking their own meals. Now, however, they're looking after each other. Before, she would constantly complain about this hurting or that hurting. Her husband was more reserved and would rarely come out to speak with us. Now, however, we are all like good friends or members of the same family. The volunteers do their best to encourage me. I feel more relaxed and happier as a result. The couple has also found common ground in their love for recycling. My health is much better now. As well, I am much more focused. Sweating. I feel more relaxed afterwards. Now the couple that was once drifting apart is firmly together again. It feels that we have a much better understanding among ourselves. As a couple, we are much happier. Thanks to Tzuji, two hearts shall never meet has become two hearts beat as one. In continuing on our report on media volunteers, we meet 69-year-old Wu Jiabo, a photography volunteer, and Ling Yingxing, a transcript volunteer. Both are devoted to recording Tzuji's work and have found a sense of accomplishment and happiness through their participation in the Buddhist NGO. Selecting a scene setting, I choose the ones where people are focused in the moment. I move next to them quietly and snap. I take my shot. My daughter said to me, since I'm taking pictures for Tzuji, I should tell her what camera I want. After asking around, I told her that a camera which has 6 million pixels and above would be fine. Then my daughter bought me a point-and-shoot camera. One day, sister Yilin told me that my pictures were good, just that the content was not so clear. Since we have taken it upon ourselves to carry out Tzuji's missions, we have to know how to use the computer, so I took some lessons. These are the photos I took a few days ago. I worked on it as soon as I got home. My son bought me an electronic writing pad. I just write the word out and it will appear on my document. It's very efficient. The way I bring people and volunteers together is through photographs. When I give it to them as a memorabilia, they feel so happy. It's because we value our media volunteers. 
I keep the good pictures and I will rename the file names so that one day when I need them, I can access them easily. This picture is classic. When Grandma Lin Gui passed away, we needed some pictures. This photo was even exhibited. My mom was so happy when she saw these pictures. She said Brother Jia Bo brought out the best in her. My mom said that of all the photos she has taken in her lifetime, these were her favorite. She had an adorable smile. Before she passed away, she said she was leaving these photos for me to remember her by. I told her I will keep them safe with me. Photos tell stories and behind each picture, there is a story to tell. Those that are on a task with her often tell me that it's very stressful to work with her as she is demanding, but she's just to the point and efficient, which makes people feel some pressure when working with her. When I am writing a transcript, I don't want to disappoint my interviewees or their life stories. I hope that with my pen, I can translate their truth, goodness, and beauty and present it for all to see. If they can inspire others in a positive way, that is enough. Part of the media team, it's a mission which requires us media volunteers to be the first to come and the last to leave. Sometimes it's working behind the scenes, and the challenge is that you have to overcome solitude and learn to enjoy loneliness. Another media volunteer who is also devoted to documenting Tsiji's work is Deng Baozhu from Taiwan's offshore island of Penghu. Over the years, Deng has done her best to spread Tsiji's ideals in the region and also improve her skills to become a dedicated media volunteer. Here's her story. I have lived in Penghu for 40 years, but I never traveled to the nearby islets. Today, I will be going to Wan An Township to interview a recycling volunteer. We have to take a boat to get there. Here at the Penghu archipelago, as the sky gradually turns bright, media volunteer Deng Baozhu gets ready to start one of her busy days. Of course it's heavy, but here we are constantly short-handed. There are only a few media volunteers, so I have to do as much as I can. In this offshore archipelago, Deng Baozhu is one of the few media volunteers, and thus also a role model for all other volunteers across the island. If we want to buy cameras or other equipment, we still have to travel to Taipei. When I was a trainee volunteer, I had already traveled back and forth between Hualien, Kaohsiung, Taipei, and Penghu. Wherever there was a training session, I would be there. Just do it. There are only a few media volunteers here in Penghu. When the schedule of the Tsiji events comes out, I have to list my priority events to film. I am so eager to chronicle all the events and spread all those beautiful moments to more people. But that's not possible because we are human beings, not machines. Oh, 
拍照的时候呢，就是有一些画面大景象，你就自己注意一下。你去带一大群出来。Instead of leading a large number of media volunteers, I prefer to lead one by one. I reckon that my capability is limited. In addition, we don't have any senior media volunteers to lead us. Later, I will be interviewing Sister Man Yuan. This is worth filming because she is quite old and she is willing to share her experience today. So I'll leave this task to you. I'm not a quick-witted person, therefore it's best to have the senior sister leading us as we improve our skills. Promoting Tsuji's humanistic spirit is the sacred task that media volunteers take to heart. Bringing Tsuji's philosophy into their life, they enjoy a long career with a heart full of Dharma joy. Back to Taizong, we meet a filial son, 80-year-old Zhen Qinghui, who has lived with his mother Zhen Jiang Afeng for the past 50 years, and says it is all children's duty to be filial to their parents. During the weekend, a group of seniors get together to make a little music and do a little exercise. The eldest is Zhen Jiang Afeng, who is 103 years old. Although the centenarian suffers from hearing loss in her right ear, she follows along with the instructor with her eyes. Next to her is her son, who himself is already 80 years old. He says whatever makes his mother happy, he will help her accomplish. Being 103, grandmother Zhen Jiang is still in good health and loves to dance with her friends. My mother likes to exercise, that's why she is in such good health. I say to her, however they move, just copy them and you will be fine. Being a filial son, Zhen Qinghui accompanies his mother on her daily walks around the neighborhood. He and his wife have lived with his mother for five decades now. <laughs> we have to reciprocate our love. She gave birth to me, took care of me, so now I need to take care of her. Mr. Zheng continues to take care of his mother's everyday needs. He says being filio is a child's duty, and he can only be a role model for his own children and grandchildren if he first fulfills his own filio duties. Now, his only wish is to spend more time with his mother so that she may live each day to the fullest. Staying in Taizong in Dali, as Tiji has taken the Lee siblings whose parents are divorced under its wing, volunteers recently arrived to help the trio move house. Let's take a look. Household appliances, refrigerator, a washing machine and the rest of the heavy items get loaded onto the truck first. Tiji volunteers work in sync to help the Lee siblings who are Tiji care recipients move house. The elder sister is 20 years old, followed by their 18-year-old brother, while the younger sister is currently in elementary school. With their parents not around and the eldest sister only recently starting to work, the family is in need of financial help. We did think of getting a removable company to help us move, but it cost 3,000 to 4,000 new Taiwanese dollars, so I'm truly thankful that you are helping us move on the weekend. A group of volunteers have been mobilized to assist as they see these kids as their own. The eldest is only 20 and she still has to look after her younger brother and sister. I think she is incredibly strong and I'm moved by her tenacity. Tsuji volunteers love and care for these three siblings will accompany them in the days ahead. In Malaysia, as the students of Tsuji College of Technology from Hualien, Taiwan are currently on an overseas exchange trip, they arrive at the Kadatin Siho to put on a children's play for kindergarteners. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.